Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Another issue that was brought in at the UNHRC this time around from the LTD loving Western clan was the need uh, to change our Prevention of Terrorism Act. What? After being battered for terrorism for over 30 years with a new carnage just a few years ago, surely the Western world must be joking, asking us to repeal our Prevention of Terrorism Act. The EU acknowledges the proposed delimited reform of the Prevention of Terrorism Act and urges further efforts to bring it in line with international standards. More comprehensive reforms are urgently needed to bring counter-terrorism legislation in line with international standards. We call upon Sri Lanka to cooperate fully and effectively with the High Commissioner and the UN institution. Benelux countries encourage the Sri Lankan governments to fully cooperate with OHCHR. All right, joining me now uh, is the former Commissioner of Human Rights in Sri Lanka, Professor Pratibha Mahana Maheva. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, for joining me. Now, the talk of the town and the UNHRC from the Western clan, apparently, this time, it is the PTA, that's the problem. Earlier on it was about human rights, and this time around it's the PTA. Professor, what is so detrimental about our PTA? Mahesh, actually we have seen most of these human rights resolutions passed against Sri Lanka by UNHRC up to 30 slash 1 was based on gross violation of international humanitarian law, international human rights law, as well as certain torture and other intimidation done by the forces. But now this has been shifted. If you see this 49th session, the report submitted by Honorable Michelle Batchelet, part F, it is very, very clearly say, part F, it is very, very clearly say, Counter-Terrorism Act. Now what are the reasons? Now, they have shifted from the old uh, so-called song that is uh, war crimes or even crimes done in the war period. Now, it has been changed because of these reasons. Number one, Easter attack, Easter Sunday attack. That is where one we have seen. And the other one is presidential pardon, which had been given under the PTA Act, those who have arrested. And also long time detained LTD suspects as well as more than 70, they say more than 70 arrested, putting uh, social media certain, uh, you know, comments or maybe social media uh, posters which arrested them under PTA. So because of these reasons, now the trend has been changed, part F of the report submitted by OCHCR very clearly address the main issue now is PTA. And also I have seen uh, Honorable Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit had also gone and visited there and given submissions. And before that uh, Joseph Rayasapulle earlier the Bishop also had given several uh, data statements with regard to that uh, innocent Tamilians were killed by armed forces or arrested or disappeared. Now the trend is a little bit changed. Now we go with not with the old trend but the new trend which is coming with uh, you know Easter Sunday attack and to publish the report and those things are there but most of them are internally which is hap which happened in other countries are not much questions. True, uh, Professor. Now, what are the key comparisons we can make uh, with other nations' uh, implementation uh, uh, structural legislator in order to combat terrorism, what they've done and what we've done? Yeah. Now, when I see Sri Lanka report, it clearly say Prevention of Terrorism Act. It clearly, they say arbitrary detention, arbitrary arrest, torture, and also two vague definitions were given in Sri Lanka PT. But if you see Counter-Terrorism Act, which passed uh, this year in Switzerland, which is very, very clear, terrorism more and too vaguely, which has been defined more too vaguely. And this leaves open door for the arbitrary measures which could threaten to the rights of the citizen uh, who have done nothing wrong in the country. And also principles of separation of powers also not respected because apart from the house arrest, uh, federal police will be responsible under the Counter-Terrorism Act 
both in deciding uh, and implementing the measures. Also, uh, it is a violation of ECHR because uh, which prohibits putting people in detention only with the suspicion. So, those are some of the cases we know presumption of innocence and also this law applies to young people and anyone can be arrested uh, under this law. So, UN Convention of uh, Right to Child certain uh, amendments, uh, certain uh, you know uh, certain provisions are violated and also the new anti-legislation law which gives the federal police to arrest anyone. So, according to all these international standards I have seen even uh, United Nations Security Council also they are not much giving definition but intimidation caution and also population and other government agencies what we have done. Now if you see India, India also have unlawful activities prevention act UAP. So under the UAP also uh, we have seen people detained for a long time period uh, and also producing any uh, incriminating evidence and strict requirement of granting bail that is very very. Now, in, not only in Sri Lanka, if you see India, we are very restricted before anyone funding for terrorist financing or even, uh, you know, giving certain type of facilities that is a real threat. And also Sri Lankans were arrested in uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, we have seen those who are supporting after the regaining of LTT, they were arrested under this law. So, very strict because, because we have to stop this at uh, a stage because terrorism, if it is spreading in Southeast Asia, it is a threat for India as well as the other country. Even in USA, uh, if you see uh, basically uh, uh, there are certain uh, the act is where uh, after 9-11 they came with the patriotic act, but uh, you may have seen uh, uh, USA strengthening uh, America by providing appropriate tools required to interpret the obstruct terrorism uh, that is USA patriotic act of 2001, which is clearly shown that uh, section 215, the government used justify the national security agency uh, controversial phone records program. And also under this uh, 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 patriotic act, someone can be arrested for suspicion, only with suspicion of uh, uh, basically connected to ISIS and other armed groups, fundamental groups and uh, certain people were arrested, a doctor also sometimes back it was arrested because checking the computer but later released. So, they are very very strict on that and also legalize the tap and uh, trace devices and sneak and peek made it easier for FBI to invade the privacy of the citizens and also section 505 gag orders violation of the first amendment rights of freedom. So, likewise, I can compare many, many countries. So, all these countries today, what is the trend? They are trying to strict enforce these laws against terrorism, terrorism financing, money laundering and other areas. Why? We must have a very peaceful world. Now, if these armed groups come up, fundamental groups come up, it can be a threat for Sri Lanka also. So, this is where the UNHRC also must consider perfectly a comparative study, comparative analysis. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Prajabha Mahanaveheva, the pro uh, former Commissioner of Human Rights here in Sri Lanka. Always appreciate it, sir.